I have to record this during the middle of the Suns game, because otherwise I'm not going to get a recording out today. So let's talk about ranking Suns playoff matchups. Uh, they're in the middle of a Bulls game. They're not going to play the Bulls in the playoffs, realistically. Let's talk about the Western Conference teams. I think there's a good nine of them. Just realistically, the Suns could play against any of these teams. I don't know if the Suns are going to be the one seed, the two seed, the three seed. I, I don't know where they're going to end up at this point. But regardless, they can play any of these, you know, nine Western Conference teams in the playoffs. The Jazz, the Nuggets, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Blazers, Grizzlies, Spurs, Warriors, and... I'm always blanking on the 10th team. Um, <laughs> I, I am now just blanking on a team. Um, it's going to be in the video. But anyways, let's talk about how the Suns stack up against all those teams. Realistically, how are they going to beat them in a seven-game series? What's the result going to be? So, let's rank Suns playoff matchups. But before we get any further, maybe click subscribe. It really helps out the channel. We're trying to get to 975 subscribers by Sunday. So, yeah, every subscriber really counts. Also, if you like um, podcasts, but you get to choose the topics of what I talk about, Eh, that sounds a little bit odd, but maybe if you're interested in that, click subscribe because that's the best way to get alerted to our live broadcasts, Q&A, podcast things. Also, it's kind of Suns pregame show. It's a mix ma- it, it's a miss- you get the point. It's mixing and matching and a bunch of different things. Just come checking out. But anyways, I'm gonna use tier maker thing for this and just drag teams here. So- <laughs> Uh, let's talk about not in playoff teams. We know the Timberwolves are not in the playoffs. Pelicans, Thunder, Spurs. Uh, no, Spurs are in the playoffs. What am I saying? The Kings and the Rockets, they're not in the playoffs. I guess let's start it off in the light work category. Who am I putting in the light work category? Well, I think the Spurs are the first one. I feel like they're probably going to end up as a 7 or 8 seed. And then they're likely just going to, you know, they're just going to lose in a play-in game. I don't see them making the playoffs just because their style of play doesn't really benefit them in a play-in game. A team that does benefit in the style of play of the play-in game would be the Warriors, you know, Steph Curry. When you have Steph Curry, you can do anything. But the Spurs, they don't really have any takeover players. They play really solid basketball. Against the Suns, I think the Suns are just more solid basketball. I mean... Suns have been extremely consistent this season. Spurs have been really up and down, but when they are winning games, it's based on their consistency. They have a really odd, you know, you know, four wings, four guards set up pretty much. Four guards, I would say. With, you know, DeRozan and Johnson and Murray and White and Lonnie Walker. And then you have Jakob Pertl at the five. It's a really interesting matchup to play against. They also have players like... Um, Mills and Gay and all these other guys, but I think the Suns have, you know, the benefit there. They just don't have a lot of star power. I think that's where the Suns are going to be the weakest is against star power in this playoffs, and Spurs just don't have a lot of that. And I guess I'll go for the first team in the no god no t tier, and that's the Lakers. They're obviously not in the light work category like it is in the thumbnail. We know that the Lakers will be the toughest matchups, matchup for the Suns in the playoffs. Just dealing with both Anthony Davis and LeBron James is extremely tough. You know, uh, even with... We have some of the better matchups in the Western Conference guarding LeBron and AD with, you know, Mikael Bridges and Jay Crowder. Some of the best one-on-one -on -one matchups. But we know it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. We know these players are more dominant. No one can guard them at all. I mean, saying that we have some of the better defenders means that they're still probably going to drop 20 a game. And, you know, when they're both on the court together, they're the top two players in the NBA because, you know, they just make each other so much better and then make all the other players around them look so much better. So, Lakers, as long as AD and LeBron are healthy, the Suns do absolutely just do not want to play against them. And I guess we'll go for the first favorable to opponent matchup, which would be the Nuggets. The Nuggets last season got a crazy showing from Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. in the playoffs, and Nikola Jokic is hitting everything, hitting every contested shot, hitting every difficult shot, and they add in a guy like Aaron Gordon, and you've got Will Barton. That offense is crazy. I would not want to play against this offense, 
but they're not the Lakers, and they're not the other no God, no team, uh, which is going to be the Clippers. But the Nuggets are very, very close. That's a really high-powered offense. They, they're, it depends on how they progress and how they figure out this team, how many screen rolls you're running of Aaron Gordon and Murray and Jokic and Barden and figuring all that stuff out. But if they really get the ball moving and they figure out how to score the ball, that's an extremely scary team. And uh, defensively, they're not the best, but I think they can do a solid job in the playoffs. Um, uh, as, as I've said in the Nuggets videos, you're not going to win a championship without a good defense, but the Nuggets are still one of the scariest teams in the playoffs. They made the conference finals and they've only gotten better. Like, I, I would not want to play against this team if the Suns have to play against them. Especially if they do make the three seed. Suns are 0-3 against them this season, but we know they should be 2-1. If you've watched my other videos, or you just watch those games, you know they should be 2-1 against the Nuggets. And um, hopefully Scott Foster isn't there, because that makes the Nuggets to a not a no-god no team for sure. Because Scott Foster just rigged both of those games. But, yeah, otherwise, it's going to be favorable to the Nuggets. Depends on how good they can get that offense and how well they're playing on the defensive end. And we'll see if they step on the, step up in the playoffs. And I guess I'll go for the next team. I'll just go for the next light work team, which is going to be the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies have just, you know, the Suns have just totally had the Grizzlies number this season. I have no clue where Jaron Jackson Jr. is. And if they don't have Jaron Jackson Jr., and I thought jo John Morant, I thought he was better at just winning games. Um, he just hasn't done that this season. And if he's not winning games in the regular season, I just have my doubts on betting on him winning games in the playoffs. If the Suns can shut him out in the playoffs, I don't know how much further the rest of this team can go. Something I've been talking about is they really need to address like a secondary scoring option in this year's draft. And, you know, having a good pick could help that out. But otherwise, yeah, I, they just don't have a lot of scoring, especially if you're shutting down John ja Morant. And I think the Suns could really um, do a good job at game planning against them. I realize the Suns are still here. I guess I'll drag them over here. Let's go with the other no god, no team, which is the Clippers. Clippers are kind of incompetent at winning in the playoffs. They have the playoffs curse, but I still have to put them up here. Because we, we can't just bet on this, you know, we're betting on a theoretical thing here. Um, just looking at the Clippers, you got Kawhi, you got Paul George. It's a similar situation to AD and LeBron. They're not nearly as good, but even though we have pretty good matchups with Mikael Bridges and Jay Crowder, it's still really tough to guard these players. And they make the rest of those players look just a bit better when they're drawing so much attention from the defense. And... That's really scary to go up against. I'm right now sitting here doubting maybe I should have put Nuggets and No God No and Clippers down a bit just because I feel like you can undermine this team pretty easily. They've had a lot of issues with their depth. They've had issues with, you know, this team just hasn't been able to put it together that well. And when they've had, when they've missed key pieces like Pat Bev and Serge Ibaka, this team just kind of collapses, even though they still have their stars on the court. So we'll see how it holds up. Are they going to not get injured? Are they going to... I mean, I'm just saying, we know the injury curse of the Clippers. Is it going to strike again? Of course, that would totally change things, but we have to bet on everyone being healthy because what else are you supposed to do? You have to assume that everyone's going to be healthy. And if everyone's healthy, they got Nick Batum, they've got Serge Ibaka, they've got Pat Bev, then this seems really scary to go up against and they make them they make themselves a no-god no-tier team and i'm considering putting in the nuggets up there but i don't think so i think the mavericks are just favorable to the suns the mavericks have just haven't been able to hit shots as of late and we know mikhail bridges puts luka Doncic in the mikhail jail and we know that their defense sucks did i already say that i don't know um if they're knocking down threes they're a scary team but if they're not knocking down threes you can just uh, take them out. And there's an interesting video. Actually, I don't know who made it, but it's basically saying, if you shut down Luka Doncic, you're going to win the game. The Suns can shut down Luka Doncic. You've got a guy right there, Mikhail Bridges, who's got his number. 
and if you shut, yeah, you shut down Luka, you shut out this team, and it, it's still a scary team, because if they're hitting threes, that's, that's an L, but if they're not, you're winning, and that's the difficult situation, you know, shutting out Luka, you're probably going to win the game, and it, it's hard to shut out Luka, that's for sure, but... Otherwise, it's a favorable, favorable matchup to the Suns. Warriors, though, I think I have to put them in the same category. I kind of want to put them in light work, but it's going to be the same case with the Blazers, too. When you've got a dominance player like Steph Curry, he's got so much playoff experience, so much winning playoff experience. I mean, other than Jay Crowder, I mean, Chris Paul, he's won quite a few games in the regular season. But he's really never stepped it up in the playoffs. He did a solid job with the Rockets in his one time in the conference finals. I know they're not going to be playing the Warriors in the conference finals. But it's still, it's a tough matchup. Do you put Mikhail Bridges on him? Does that undermine the depth of your wing defenders? If you're putting Mikhail Bridges on him. Who are the Warriors even starting? I don't know. <laughs> um, are they starting Oubre? Uh, if they're starting Oubre, um, how's that going to go? And the thing is, you don't want to bet about you don't want to bet against Steph Curry, and you really don't want to bet against Damian Lillard. So the point where I'm going to put Damian Lillard and the Trailblazers into favorable to opponents, that's a tough, tough matchup, especially with two smaller guards. What do you do with Miguel Bridges? Who's guarding the other of Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum? Like this is tough, tough matchup. I don't think they've played against both Dame and C.J. this season. I might be wrong. But that is an exceedingly tough matchup. Two of the better scorers in the NBA. If one's not taking over, the, the other one probably is. And that's this is the most talented roster that Damian Lillard's ever played with. And if they were going to be successful in the playoffs, it's going to be this year. They really haven't been able to put it together. But if they do figure it out, you do not want to play against this team in the playoffs. Also, they have Norman Powell. You know, he's averaging 19 a game. And that's another small guard. Like, what are you doing there? Is Chris Paul really going to shut this guy down? That's a lot of scoring, and the Suns, I don't know how Jay Crowder does against any of those particular matchups. You know, you don't really want Jay Crowder to be stuck on, you know, a wing like Robert Covington or Damian or Darren, Derek Jones Jr. Want him. He's one of your better defenders. It just isn't a great matchup for him. And, yeah, that puts the Suns in an odd situation where Chris Paul and Devin Booker would have to step up big time defensively to do a good job in this series. And I just don't know how it's going to turn out, especially in the playoffs, especially where CJ and Dame have looked really good. And we'll see if Yusuf Nurkic can take a step up. But I think I think DA should do a solid job. But also, just seeing Damian Lillard come off those screens, isolate against DA, that's just... Oh, I just, I would not want to play against that. That's one of the the hardest things for the Suns to deal with is Damian Lillard off of screens. And they do a lot of those screens, so that's why it's really tough. Also, you know, Steph Curry, <laughs> that's also pretty scary off screen versus DA. Finally, I have to put the Jazz in favorable to Suns. I'm sorry, I think Jazz are a good team. But, you know, if they're playing in the conference finals and both teams got there, <laughs> that's going to be a very unlikely event if happening. Let's just point that out right away. If the Suns are the two or three seed, the Jazz are the one seed, or vice versa, it it's very unlikely they make it to the finals. We know how good the Lakers and the Clippers are and the Nuggets are. It's very unlikely that both teams make the conference finals. And if they do, I think the Suns just kind of take over this uh, series with guard play. You just kind of stick Mikael Bridges onto um, Donovan Mitchell, and I think this series just just goes extremely in the Suns' favor. And I have to put it favorable to Suns. I don't think it's light work by any stretch because they're a great team. They have a great offense. They have a great defense. But it is very favorable to the Suns. I would say um, they're going to be both sides are going to be tired, and I think the Suns will take advantage of the advantage of that so much more than Jazz will. And that, that's even granted that the Suns will have the tougher matchups. I think the Suns still would have the advantage because, yeah, I mean, I think the Suns just have better matchups and they, I mean, they're very similar on offense and defense. They're both great defensive teams. They're both great three-point shooting teams. 
I think the guard play wins it at the end of the day for the Suns. Also, the matchup of Mikael Bridges on Donovan Mitchell. And that's it. I'm trying to watch the Suns game. Uh, let me be. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Uh, maybe click subscribe. That'd be cool.